All right, we're back for episode six. Woo-hoo-hoo. The aptly titled Get My Go. Yes. <laughs> it's the hashtag. Everybody use this hashtag. Um, it's going over really well. Yes, it is. Get My Go or Gets My Go. He said both, so we don't know which one to do. But <laughs> Get My Go sounds better as a show. So it's me. We got Joe Feeney back again, of course. Of course, why not? Uh, special guests. We've got Mr. Rob Francois. He kickstarted the whole movement. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I, I kind of started the whole downfall of the wrestling with depression uh, sure. show. So, uh, yeah, no, it's good to be here. Good to be here for the first uh, parody of, yes. uh, of Mr. Mr. Johnny Podcasting. So it's good to see you guys. And from the other side of the world, we are honored to have the legendary Fat Coon, a.k.a. Dean from Australia, the Aussie guy. Welcome. Yeah. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, great to speak to Joe Feeney for the first time. And uh, face look, to face. Yeah, look, guys, <laughs> this is face. face to face. Absolutely, this is going to be monumental, huge and monumental. It's going to be monumental. And um, look, I know. I personally know Rob is so excited. He had to warn his neighbours to close the curtains because <laughs> he's been flogging his dolphin all week. So yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> hey. like, it's it is it is exciting it's very exciting because um there was a it's like a coup almost took place when we put on twitter that you were coming on i realized that you may or may not have gotten you know a message or a dm imploring you to speak to someone before you would do such a thing so ha- where where does that currently stand yeah that was very very interesting uh, I, I think i put out a tweet uh, something along the lines of uh, he had six months to talk to me um yeah. and but he, the, the, I think I said the pussy bitch has had me blocked for six months. Um, and Joe, you put out a tweet saying that I was uh, coming up on this show. And, and then I suddenly was unblocked and received a, received a DM uh, from the great man. How could he possibly <laughs> see what I was tweeting? I thought he had me blocked. <laughs> yeah, well, I was blocked that's, too. So that's, I mean, that's, that's yeah. weird. Yeah. I mean, um, there was this random Aussie guy burner account that uh, tweeted him as well, just to make sure that he knew what was going on. But mm. yeah, he did uh, finally decide. And John, I just want to make something clear. My tweet said you had six months to talk to me. The six months was up. There was no more time, mate. Like, I, I'm not wasting my time talking to you. This stuff right here is so much more interesting and fun. Uh, and I've listened to all these episodes so many times, and they get funnier every time. Uh, Husey's got me blocked because of all this bullshit, and he's had me blocked for a long time. But I'm going to say right now, Husey, you used to annoy me a bit, and uh, I didn't think you were that funny Hello. until this. Yeah, yeah cheers, yeah. Um, but, yeah, if... Listening to these shows, and Husey's been on fire, mate. He has been hilarious. I'm into his own. Yeah. So I'm a Husey fan, mate. So, hey, look, you don't need to unblock me, but, you know, good job, mate. You've been doing well. I like hearing that, that people not only are watching or listening or viewing them more than once, but there's people that are like, you know, it's perfect. I throw on the thing. I cut my grass. I'm sitting out back with a beer in front of the fire pit, you know, shit like that. So it's like, wow, this people are enjoying it, you know. I, I came up with a clip, so I'm the one that put the time in this week, and uh, I sent it to Mike to play. But before we play the clip and kind of make fun of it and mock and everything, I kind of just wanted to hear Dean's story because I have no idea. I'm completely unfamiliar. All I knew is that at some point, those you know there was heat, and then uh, next thing you know, we were buddies. But I don't know what led to John to stop using you or whatever it was. So whatever, whatever you want to say, whatever story you want to tell. Uh, look, yeah, you and I. I think uh, when all this. When the sort of worked, the worked feud that you've spoken about uh, sort of started, I sort of went, well, Joe Feeney's on K100 and I tweeted K100 and yourself one day uh, busting balls and trying to get on to K100 and, mm. uh, and you replied back to me a bit snarky and like thinking it was on yeah. and, and then you and I went back and forth, back and, forth and you clearly, I kind of clearly won your respect and you followed me and DM'd me. And offered me the K100 intro, which <laughs> I, but then I got, I got bumped for Shane Helms and then things really kicked off in yeah. this war and it was really getting personal from John's side. Uh, so at that point you didn't get back to me about the K100 intro. And then I think a little while later we started chatting again and that was when I realized the wheels were falling off the network and so, yeah, I was, and Rob knows this, I've spoken to Rob, I was telling Joe stuff about how I felt about the network. But one thing re- needs to be made really clear, John, is uh, Joe knows everything. Uh, oh. I didn't, 
I didn't feed Joe any information. Joe was feeding me information about the network that I was on. <laughs> I didn't tell I didn't tell Joe anything he didn't already know. Uh, Joe told me stuff that I didn't know. Uh, so yeah, John, Joe knows everything. Don't kid yourself, mate. He knows everything. But what do you mean when you say that when you realize the wheels were falling off? Like, and then Rob, that can go to you too. Like, was you know some clues or like what what was going on to make you guys go? I don't know that this is going to make it. Like, I kind of wanted it to. Uh, you know, was it like the jumping of platforms? It, it, like it, it was the jumping of of platforms. It was the false promises. Like, oh, you know, we're going to do all these things. Like. You know, the show with Severn, the show with Vampiro. And then when that stuff didn't work out, he always had an excuse for it. And he's like, oh, our numbers are fantastic. We've grown quicker than any other podcast network in the history and blah, 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 blah. And, you know, I saw the pattern of the way he treated you guys, the CCN guys. I saw the pattern of the way he treated Lane and Russo. You know, I saw just the, the, the pattern of behavior that, you know, when somebody does John wrong, I, I love... I love the uh, the term that you guys used a few weeks ago. He's he's like a scorn lover, you know. He's like a jaded lover, and whenever somebody does his does John wrong, he always has to get back at them. And for whatever reason, John had a you know something in his head that Dean was feeding information to you, Joe. And oh, John convinced me that you know Dean is a mole, and that we got to cut him loose. He goes, I don't want to do any more shows with him. We were doing a. Uh, uh, a fantasy football show every week called Tackling Reality on the Reality uh, Wrestling with Reality feed. And Dean was the host and did a fantastic job on that show. We had a lot of fun with it. And Dean even said to me privately, you know, months later, he's like, I'm kind of glad, you know, we're not doing business with John anymore because between you and me, uh, the one week that he took that show off because he got pissed off at something that Dean said about him and, and got his panties in a fucking bunch. Uh, we had, you know, one of the best shows we'd ever done. And, and he said, John kind of bogs that show down and Dean had more fun with me, but because I was really good friends with John and he is, he look, he is very persuasive. Like he's a very good salesman and he made me think that Dean was a mole. And of course he didn't have the balls to do it himself. He convinced me to DM Dean privately at the and say, yeah, and say, you know, we know that you're a mole. We know that you're feeding information. You know, we think you're part of all these troll accounts like the Illumination oh, and, and yeah, whoever yeah. else. And John was even going to look up like timestamps of when like all his accounts were tweeting and, and going off Australian time to see if he can figure out like what's what. So, and Dean was my friend. Dean co hosted the Rad Turtles Wrestling Podcast with me. And at that point, he had left the show because, well, like everybody, he, he hates watching wrestling nowadays. So, we mutually decided to part ways on that, but we were still doing the football project with John and, and Dean's been a good friend of mine. We talked you know, about family. Uh, you know, I had a daughter a couple years ago. Dean had a son, you know, a few months after that. And we talked a lot of family stuff and, you know, we were, we were personal friends and through John's persuasion, I ended my relationship with Dean and to Dean's credit, he took it like a man. He was very upset, but you know, when the whole breakup with John happened with myself, I manned up and I messaged Dean and told him that I was sorry and that, you know, I told him everything that had gone on with John and I'm sorry I'm being long winded, but I just want to give everybody the backstory that might not know about my relationship with Dean and how that thing, you know, went down. But, you know, I, I said, Dean, I'm sorry, man. Like I, I'm telling you man to man, uh, that I apologize for, um, unfriending you, so to speak, and not talking to you anymore. And Dean and I got on Skype and he, I let him lay into me for the better part of 45 minutes. And he just told me how upset he was and lambasted me and I took it and we hashed it out and things are good now. So is that a pretty accurate representation, Dean, of what went down? Yeah, you pretty much nailed it. Um, yeah, I, I was pissed off at the time, but I'd like days before, uh, literally days before I'd said on your hundredth episode, uh, that I was done after the football season. You know, I wasn't going to do any more podcasts. I'd like two weeks to go. That's what pissed me off the most is you're not even going to talk to me. You know, I got two weeks to go, you know, even or three weeks to go. You're not even going to talk to me and like ask me these questions. Like, yeah. so whatever, like all their accusations were bullshit. The funniest thing was, is one of the things was uh, about the Sammy Guevara cameo. <laughs> I didn't know what, I didn't know what a cameo was until Joe, Joe DM me and went, that's pretty bushly getting the, 
Sammy Guevara cameo. Yeah. And I just replied with, yeah, I don't know what's going on. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't know what a cameo was. I just knew, knew they'd paid for the spot. But like, you know what I mean? That was, that was my big, you know, mole thing. Like you told me that they paid for a cameo. I didn't know. I just went, oh, they paid money to get Guevara to do it. But yeah. Um, yeah, look, all in all, for me, when I knew when the walls, uh, wheels were falling off when I heard the first episode of The Realist Guys in the Room um, and I clicked it off immediately and went, this ain't going anywhere. This ain't going anywhere. And that's when he was talking big. He was talking about paying me. Yeah. And I was like, mm, yeah, yeah, I'll believe it when I see it. You know, like this ain't costing me anything. Like I didn't put a dollar into it. Um, you know, like the only thing was sometimes it was annoying because I had to work later in the afternoon because I started work later to do a podcast. But, um, you know, I, it didn't cost me any money. So I was like, yeah, well, hey, look, if you start paying me, start paying me. But <laughs> please, I didn't think it, we were going to get paid. And when I heard that first Dan 7 episode, I was like, this is not going to happen. Uh, this is not going to work out. And I thought Vampiro was the best shot. I knew it was a flake, but I thought he's got some fans. Yeah. You know, you, you might be able to get a Patreon kicking off with him. But once again, like John, John can't host a podcast, man. <laughs> like That's, <laughs> you know, and there's so much stuff that you guys are like, are opening my eyes to. I was like, I clearly didn't pay that much attention to what he was saying when I was on a podcast with him because <laughs> I haven't noticed all these things until you guys have started pointing it out, you know what I mean? But what I did know was when Rob and I worked, like, together, just he and I, that it was pretty good shows. They, that, they weren't too bad. Um, but when John was in there, just slow the momentum and just kill the show and, ugh, just couldn't deal he, with it. He anymore. has no personality, you know what I mean? Like, he's not funny... He's not witty. Like we all pretty come up with pretty quippy stuff on Twitter and DMS and stuff like that in our shows. And he just, he doesn't have like, I, I don't know if he's, I, I don't know. I, I, he doesn't have that ability to do so. I mean, he's, he's, he's boring. The, one of the things that interests me is, is the stuff that I don't know. Cause I don't know everything, but like the, the, the back door shit, don't anybody get excited. But like uh, <laughs> where you said, uh, you know, he would check Twitter timestamps and shit like that to see when people were tweeting to try to nail them down yeah. as a parody account. And for the record, not that he'll believe what I say, but I know for a fact Dean is not the Illumination because I know who the Illumination is. I've met, I've hung out with the Illumination. I know him. It's not Dean. Dean did not come to MLW at the fucking Philadelphia 2300 Arena. I don't think so. Maybe if he was there, I didn't see him, but he certainly wasn't the Illumination, nor is he Kevin Gall or the, I don't even know. I always get those two guys confused. Or, uh, you know, any of those. Uh, but I guess my question is, what's what's one of the weirder or more obsessive things that you guys know that John did similar to that, like checking timestamps or whatever, that he tried to, you know, to try to find something to use against us or whatever? He would check the Reality Check Podcast Network website. And he would see, like, IP addresses, and it would show him everybody that logged on. And he could yeah. see when Husey would go on there. <laughs> it, would, it would give you know, Husey's location away or, yeah. or your location away. Yeah. So he's like, these fuckers are, are stalking me, man. These guys are these, – sorry, I can't do it like Husey. Come on, man. These guys oh, are stalking man. me, man. What's up with my fucking eyebrows, man? Oh, that's tough. <laughs> um, but no, like, yeah, he would, he would do stuff like that that I would know about. Yeah. And show me screenshots of when you guys, you know, might have been logging on to the the website, so he can he can, you know, tell the cops and sue you guys for stalking oh, him. Ruined, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, the uh, a, a lot of, you mentioned vampire. A lot of, there's a lot of stuff about that in this clip that we're going to play. So we'll have some time to talk about that during the clip. So Mike, if you want to start that this joyous, wonderful clip out, you're going to be it's a treat for you, buddy, because there's a few lines in there you're really going to love. Okay. I do this want to is, comment on that. This is around the time, just to preface it, that uh, that uh, Vampiro had gone on of his own. This had nothing to do with me or Husey or anyone. Vampiro answered a question on a live stream about his podcast and said that he heard John took money or took Patreon money or something. Had nothing to do with us. Nothing, for the record. I hadn't spoken to him. I didn't speak to him for weeks until weeks after that. So, But that was that's what eventually... Uh, set John off to, to record this, I guess. I didn't make any money on that deal. I lost money, if anything, on that deal, folks. And in time and in the investment to help somebody, no deed does go unpunished in life. Well, you know, he resurfaces a few weeks ago because of course the YouTube deal with the Tyson camp people went to shit because once again, it's just, unfortunately I wish him success, but here's just Vamp's MO 
and his whole career and his whole life. He goes from one fucking uh, goose egg to the next there to try to get rich quick or whatever, maybe. And Vamp's a talented guy and he does, he does have a good heart to him in a lot of ways too. I'm not going to bash him in any personal things. Is he a pain in the ass to deal with? Yeah, he is. He's a moody motherfucker. And he, he's very hateful to certain people and he's very set in his ways on what he wants to do. And he's a pain in the ass to deal with. That's just already, it's enjoyable to me when it's the similar MO where he's a great guy. He's a very talented, <laughs> I'm not going to bad mouth him, but let me tell you something about this motherfucker. He's got a bad attitude. He's a prick. He's lazy, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to say anything about him though. Yeah, unfortunately, and- unfortunately, he wished him all the best. <laughs> it, it, that was unfortunate that he had to wish him all the best. And yeah. uh, talk about going from goose egg to goose egg, hey? Eh? Yep. Yeah. And, and and the fact that he said he lost money on it. Uh, all right, let me set the record straight on that one because I personally know exactly what happened. Uh, we started the Patreon together. I was helping John with it, and yeah, we had to cancel it because Vamp didn't want to do the show anymore. And John refunded everyone's money that paid in out of his own pocket. Oh. How can you lose money that you're just fucking returning that someone gave to you? It's not like he gave them. You know, it's not like the Patreon was ten dollars a month and he gave them twelve back for fucking interest or whatever. Like yeah. he literally gave back the same money that somebody gave to him. So how the fuck does that involve losing money? Like what the this guy my, doesn't know math as we I, learned from I last feared. week's episode. And and, and um. I'll talk about this more through because he's going to predict my Vampiro show fails. So we can talk about that. But um, my theory is that to get Vamp on board, he may or may not have said, hey, I'll give you $100 a week or $200 a week before we get this off the ground. And then I'll make my money back, which, of course, he didn't do. Just my theory. So if he was paying out to Vamp before any sponsors or Patreon came through, then, yeah, he lost money because there was no it never happened, you know. Just he, never, he never told me any of that. So yeah. and he was pretty open with what, you know, the business model was. Yeah. And he never mentioned any payments given to him to like a signing bonus or whatever. So yeah. I can't speak to that. But as far as I know, like if he's literally talking about paying the Patreon of his own pocket, well, fuck, man, it's not. Makes sense. It wasn't your money to begin with, you moron. I just think- I know, I know, I know yeah. how he lost the money. He lost the money. He had like 100,000 download, downloads paid for. <laughs> uh, and the show's oh, never went ahead. So yeah. there you well, go. Well done. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just one thing real quick before we play again. I, I always thought that it was a plan to like you can't say you can't episode one say and there's a Patreon. You got to yeah. build the audience first and get a little loyalty without making it seem like this show is horse shit and we're just trying to get you in the door over here to pay. You know, it's I don't know. It's and that's to me everyone that starts a Patreon early is balls now. That's why they don't succeed. You mm-hmm. have to wait. You have to do six months or a year. Before you start going, hey guys, we've been giving you all this content. Why don't you try this over here? You know, I mean, that's what Conrad did. Conrad waited at least a year with Pritchard and Shivani and all them. Yeah, you those know, guys could have killed it six months in. You know? Yeah. What was the highest number of patrons that they had? I don't remember offhand, Mike, oh, but I, no, I, I, I this clip gets to it. <laughs> I think okay. it's like. <laughs> it, well, the clip from, can say what it wants because, but I, I'm not. I'm oh, not yeah, sure yeah, that's yeah. accurate. I yeah. want like if Rob knew an accurate. From yeah. what I saw, maybe eight. 10 yeah, yeah. And the only reason i said the clip will cite is because there's no way he's li- he would lie about this number sat in his ways on what he wants to do and he's a pain in the ass to deal with as a person is he a nice guy that dealings that i've had with him as a friend yeah he was always nice with that stuff we had a business relationship you know we talked very frequently when we were working together for that period of time and it was cool to get a chance to know vampiro because i became a fan of him through getting to know him and through some of the fan stories that i saw it was a very positive and powerful thing to see that he made an impact on a lot of people's lives and that was really cool to see and I got to know who Ian was and not who Vampiro was, which was a complete difference. And, you know, that was cool. But then you see the other side of people at times, too. And unfortunately, that's just the way it goes. And it just people end up like that way and sometimes let you down and whatever it is, you know, not saying anything, you know, in regards to I don't wish success for him, but don't fucking sit over there when you're a public figure and make that comment, especially when I did everything and all you did was show up and you didn't do shit to give people your stuff. We were the ones trying to get you to do the work, to put the effort in and we couldn't get it out of you. I, I just like that. He's amazed that Vampiro is not the same as the, as the guy portraying the character. That's, that's funny to me. And <laughs> B, unfortunately, dude, and uh, obviously I'm in this position with a few shows like, yeah, that's their job is to just show up and record. And uh, unfortunately, you know, vamp, probably didn't do that too much for you guys either but that's it you you are supposed to go above and beyond because it's their name value that's worth anything at all you know and you're not 
at, at, well, at you know. Um, look, we all know that wrestlers are as a whole are different people, right? They're, sure. A lot of them, a lot of them can be flaky. A lot of them can be hard to deal with. A lot of them can be hard to get a hold of. You know, they're they're different cats. Uh, but Vamp self admittedly had you know uh, mental issues. You know, he said he, he suffered from depression and, and anxiety, and you know, Vamp has a lot of issues going on. And you know, John as a as a counselor or as a social worker or whatever the fuck he claims to do for a living. Uh, he should know how to handle that. You know what I mean? Like he should, he should, <laughs> he should have all the tools to be equipped to deal with a guy like Vampiro that may be a little oh. flaky or may have depression issues or all that. And and uh, to call him a, a piece of shit, like you said, and then oh, he's a great guy. He's a great guy. Love him. Nothing but respect. But, but, just like Mike. Yeah. You know. But um. And then and then just trash him. Like John, he's he's a he's a walking hypocrite, man. I just love I love his style. You guys keep pointing it out. His style is yeah build you up and then knock you down. Like it's like a shot to the balls and then lift you up. You okay, mate? You okay? Shot to the balls. You know, just that same rotation uh, over and over. And then I couldn't wait for the end there. He finally got, he finally got there, man. He got there. He can't sit over there, man. He can't <laughs> sit over there, man. And, and tell me this stuff, man. He can't do that, man. There's some, there's some greatest hits in this one. And I just happened I, like last <laughs> night I was like, all right, I know this vampire episodes here. Let's see what I can find for today. And, I was, uh, it was manna from heaven as usual. You don't fuck people in return from that, but you know what? It happens. I hoped your YouTube deal was going to work out, man. And it didn't because you know why? Because you want to get rich quick and you don't want to put the effort in that other people do to get it over. You want to do wrestling shows and appearances and then you cancel them all the time and you don't go. Was John talking to himself now? Just say, no, right. that was that was uh, Richie, but uh, he was. I don't no. know if the was that great. And I, like I said before, I wanted to make make clear as we're doing this that in no way we're only making fun of. Uh, excuse me, we're only parodying one person here today. We're not we're not taking shots at Richie. I, actually, when I listened to a little bit more of the show, Richie was the <laughs> Richie was the best part of the show and the glue. So just to make that clear, he, he usually was. I mean, that's why Wrestling Anonymous, their show, was a, a huge success. That's yeah. still getting downloads every day, even though they haven't put out a show in two months. Uh, Richie is, yeah, he was the glue. Like when he left, like I, I, me leaving was a big deal because I was really close to John and obviously my show was a top performer on his network. Uh, but when Richie left, like that, that really hurt. Cause I mean, he, look, he bought $10,000 worth of action figures just to be friends, you know, with Richie and kind of fit in. So, uh, when, when Richie left, man, that was a, that was a huge blow to him for real. Richie's a superstar, man. Well, I, I would say that the the, dom, the combined domino effect of Dean and then you guys was way worse than losing Vampiro or Severn, you know, and I don't think John realized that. Actually, this is a great time. What I was actually saying was John's comments about Vampiro were pretty much what is being said to John right now. Like you wanted to get quick, uh, rich quick, you know, you wanted heaps of downloads yeah. too yeah. quick. Like John, that was you, and uh, and that's what you're doing now. But well, then you go and you resurface a few weeks ago because you unfollow me as soon as we stop doing stuff together on social media. Whatever, man. I don't need to hear from you. It's not like I want to be your friend and go hang out. I've never met you in person. You know, we did a few months together. It was what it was. You unfollow me on social media. Whatever. I see that you finally. Uh, you know, smart enough to see that this idiot Adam Hughes went on forever to go and sit over there and trash on him online on the keeping it 100 show with Conan, you know, and everything making fucking videos or whatever it was that they put on their YouTube to get clickbait headlines, to get it over there, to get people over there. I love that. The over there, he just said it twice in one sentence. It's like a reaction. It just gets added yeah. to a random sentence over think, there. Yeah, sir, like we've been accused of course of making fun of poor brother martin for his uh, stutter but do you think maybe john was a stutterer and that's his you know you know how a stutter has a certain phrase they say to to beat the stutter yeah maybe that's it maybe he had some kind of speech impediment i liked mike and Hughes's take uh the other week he just he, he just resets like he's he just goes <laughs> he goes into fault mode and he goes it just, in a loop yeah it just resets and resets it's just over there man they're just yeah. over there man making whatever videos videos or whatever there man on on that keeping it 100 like oh my god it's just, whatever man i don't want to be i don't want to be your friend man it one takes minute. him 20 one minute minutes. Before. One yeah, minute take, before. Vamp and I were tremendous friends. We talked every day. One minute later. I don't want to be your fucking friend, you motherfucker. It, it takes him 20 minutes to wrap up a show. Oh, yeah. Uh, but, you know, one thing I thought was funny, he mentioned, you know, you guys 
putting clickbait headlines out there. Isn't that exactly what he does with his podcast titles? Like, okay, here's a fucking extreme rules, fight for the fallen, blah, 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 preview. And then the last 45 minutes, I'm going to bash Joe and Rob and, and everybody else. Like, or Sonny gets arrested again. Or Tessa Blanchard poops on audio, whatever, whatever. Yeah. That's, all, that's what he does, man. He uses <laughs> he uses catchy headlines to get people to reel in, and and then gives you his real message, which is just forty five minutes of him fucking rambling on and saying the same shit over and over again. And then you call this kid out, and you bring him on, and you go on his show. The audio is dreadful because Vamps, of course, being the professional that he is, he's in the car doing an interview with this guy that was punking him out. Vamp calls him out, and then before you know it, they're talking. And because Vamp's a nice guy when you talk to him, he's a very endearing guy when you get a chance to sit down with him. So then at the end of the show, after these guys buried him to me to tell me what a crook he was and to not go with him and warn me, he wants, Oh, we'll get you over. You should, we should talk about getting that podcast back up there so we can get you somebody that can make you some money with it over with us. And then right after Vamp says on the show that he has no interest in ever doing the po- a podcast again, he's not that interesting. He doesn't have anything to talk about on there and he doesn't like doing it that much and he doesn't like talking about himself. Yeah, I just wanted to say that uh, I think the big difference and one thing that, that John should have learned earlier and, and maybe he will going forward is that it hasn't been all successes on this end either. I started with my two big, big names were Animal and Joel Gertner. Didn't work out with Joel. Shane comes on. Great. Then Vampiro. Vampiro didn't work. Now I got Kevin Sullivan. Like, you just got to take, take the, the hits and move on and not get – not go nuts over it or really get obsessive. You know, just because we took shots about Sever not working in Vampiro, try again. It's not a big deal. Vampiro with, with creative control, he did two, two shows in English, two in Spanish. So he did four. I was wrong before. He did four. Thank God I wanted to get the four. Uh, we made some money off Blue Chew. He said he was taking a trip. And that I basically never heard from him again. So, but I didn't put myself in a position like John with the Patreon where I, I God damn it, I have to have this Vampiro show. People are waiting for it because I knew better. And I'm not, you know, people that just like F and for real came over to creative control. And um, Blake's point was like, well, we thought you, you were going to ask us to come on the network. Well, I really don't. I'm there. And if people want to come on, you know, they, people have been coming to me, you know, John Paz came to you at the Sullivan show, I guess. And he's got shows everywhere. I guess he just wanted to see what we, you know, what it would be like being on CCNM and if we can make him a couple of bucks. But the, the point being, you know, Vamp stopped doing shows and I wasn't chasing him. It was just like, all right, it was nice, nice work with you, you know, and then you just move on to the next thing. It's not, it's not the end of the world. So. And did you bash him? Did you bash Vampiro? Did you bash Gertner? Did you bash anybody that left your network? Did you, did you go on and make an episode about how hard they were to deal with and how much they were paying the ass? No, with Gertner, um, he just wanted a little bit more time than I had to be able to dedicate to the show. That was all. We just had a disagreement on that. And Vamp just went and did Vamp things. And that yeah. was, okay, well. But, I mean, you didn't obsess over it and have to make uh, an episode on your podcast trashing the guys that didn't work out. That's See, he wants to call you a horrible person. Yeah. But that's the fucking difference between Joe Feeney and John Wanglin. Like, you are a professional and you wouldn't do that because you know you don't want to burn bridges publicly but this fucking asshat is so obsessed with people that wrong him that he has to go and, and make a public record right exactly what's, what's funniest to me is uh, he's pointing out that like he gets an offer to make some money from joe feeney and joe feeney provides him the money that john wanglin promised him uh, <laughs> yeah. and, you know, and was but joe feeney's a piece of shit because of that Neither yeah. one of us got rich, but he certainly got paid for every episode that he produced. And not and that's not that probably wouldn't have continued. Um usually I can get someone paid at the start and then it's like, all right, now you gotta continue, or you have to get these conversions or you're not gonna keep making money off it. I'm sure that his his blue chew deal wasn't exactly a home run, or else they would have been asking me where, you know, is he gonna continue? So uh they they strike a deal apparently. Yeah, and hey, you know what? If you think you get my go to that, man, let me tell you. Oh, yes. thank, thank you, Joe. Get Jones. my go. There's, yes. one. There's one. How did I not pick that up the first time I heard that That's months ago? tremendous. <laughs> we need to get my go drinking game. Be a shirt, dude. Oh, yeah. oh. That's, that's, yeah. in, that's in your shirt store, buddy. Um, Mike, if you want to uh, start playing, playing the audio again uh, on your marks, get my go. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Ooh, well done. Yeah, and hey, you know what? If you think you get my go to that, man, 
Let me tell you right now, you said the guy was a crook. You said he was a phony. And why would you want to do business with him to me? And then you guys want to hop in with him? Joe, I know after you, you, after you told your whole audience uh, that you, you thought he was, you know, what he was or whatever you yeah. said, uh, bashing him for the month that you did. Yeah. Yeah. Garbage. Uh, you know, that kind of makes you look show. bad too. Yeah. Yeah. As you heard, and they made fun of the concept of the show and the name and his six fans in India or whatever it is that they said on there and all that stuff. And there was so many other things that people could go back in the archives and find. I'm not going to dig through their shit. I'm not like them. I don't do that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. Okay. No. Whoa, he doesn't dig through. Actually, what I took out from this clip was him playing clips from Keeping It 100, three or four of them, and I think a clip from Husey's show. So obviously he did go through. Secondly, what he didn't understand was, did we make fun of the show? Yes. Were we making fun of Vampiro? No. We were making fun of John. And, and if Conan said anything about Vampiro's business dealings on the show, that's not making fun of someone. It's just Conan answering a question, probably, you know? And for him earlier to say, Husey always going on, keeping it 100, doing this. Husey's been on keeping it 100 one fucking time. Yep. You know what I mean? Husey's never been on that show because that's part of the fucking joke, right? So Fine, because these were things people sent to me where they're calling me a dumb hick and stuff on there. And there's a million more that I didn't put in there, I'm sure. And I just didn't listen to because honestly, I only see when people do the trash stuff about me. Um, when people sent it to me and I told this to somebody the other night who was one of the people who was doing it, who me and him had a very nice conversation and I'm not going to discuss the person's name or anything. That's none of anybody's business, um, on that stuff, but somebody who had been a little bit of, you know, against certain things with us and somebody that I have a lot of respect for and we worked it out as gentlemen. What the fuck did he just say? <laughs> Dude, I, I'm trying to pay attention. I can't understand what he's saying. Can you go back and say, I just want to, I want to hear that a little bit again. Just go back about five, 10 seconds. And I told this to somebody the other night who was one of the people who was doing it, who me and him had a very nice conversation and I'm not going to discuss the person's name or anything. That's none of anybody's business um, on that stuff. But somebody who had been a little bit of, you know, against certain things with us and somebody that a I have a lot of respect of for. And we worked it out as gentlemen and it's over with and nothing but good things to say about that person. And it's funny to see, you know, like with some of these people when they say those things and then they go and do it, you know, and then they're going to make a deal with this guy. And Hey, I, if you're going to make him money, good for you, man, because let me tell you the amount, small amount of money you're going to make him right off the bat ain't going to be enough to hold his interest really long. And you warned me and I didn't listen to you and I'm warning you. And you're not going to listen to me. So we'll be equal on not listening to one another. You're going to get fucked. You're going to get screwed. You're going to get flaked on and it's not going to work out. You can't just take someone's advice and then just, no, no, now I'm using it. It's like grappler seven said, there's nothing he can't, there's no original concepts. Remember what you said? Well, take heed. Cause I'm going to tell you the same thing. I, as I already explained, I knew exactly what was going on and that's why uh, there's no Patreon. There's no big commitment. We made a two episode commitment with, with Blue Chew, and that was it. So, and also, I just want to know, Mike, because obviously he was talking about you. Was it a very nice conversation you two had as gentlemen? Oh, is that he was talking about me? He's talking about you, yeah. When <laughs> that, he meant, that's what I thought, yeah. When he meant, uh, he said one of the guys who was talking shit, but then uh, I talked to him and we hashed it out, kind of thing. That's that's when you guys spoke back then, yeah. Nothing but love, nothing but respect. Mike is such a great guy. You. Yeah, love my thought- great guy. Anything Wait a minute! Mike. I Love thought Mike. great video. What, what, what's the date on this show, Joe? It's in January, or Feb, uh, yeah, late January. Okay, because I spoke to him on January thirtieth, so it may have uh, been. You know, you know what? It's February because the Conan one was in January. Okay, so yeah, like, um, like that. was that 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 was the bit that I didn't know what the fuck he was saying? Yeah, yeah. that guy. He I thought doing... he was talking about Dean actually. <laughs> yeah, well, I was kind of thinking the same thing. <laughs> that guy who was doing some things over there to kind of whatever against us yeah. or whatever you say. Like it's he had a he was against some of the things painful to listen to. Yeah. He was against some of the things we were doing. I'm not gonna mention his name because that's nobody's business. And that that, see that's another thing that he does that you know who he's talking about. Yeah. We all know who he's talking about, but he never mentions anybody by name until he's really pissed. He did that because he was trying to get my go on the whole situation. (laughs) Did he though? Uh, Did did he get your go? Because he does have talent, because he is an engaging character. You're not going to give him what he wants right off the bat. He doesn't have the commitment. And like he said on the show that he was on with you when you were, when they were asking why it didn't work out the first time, the guy's got severe mental health issues as he alluded to. 
and said he can't keep his interest for long on anything. And he has a frequent history, as you can see in his career, of bouncing back and forth between random places to the next. Sorry, I forgot. Who is he talking about? Uh, is this, Vampiro. Is this, oh, sorry, I wasn't sure if it was Joe, Husey, <laughs> Rob, Durband, <laughs> Vince I mean, I Russo, you could, you could Jeff insert, Lane. Yeah, like, I mean, who the could, fu- it's the same shit over and over again. Yeah, just yeah. insert random name here. It's the same shit. Right. Yeah. And he doesn't necessarily have a startling reputation in regards to working, as was given to me when people told me when I was working with them. And these are the people that he's going to work with now. They're not bringing you on to make money with you, Vamp. They're bringing you on because they think you're pissing me off by doing it and that they're getting one over on me. You're not getting one over on me, fellas, by doing it. I could give a shit less that you do a show with him or anybody else. All right. I hope you're successful, too. I don't like you as people, but I hope you're successful. I love it. It's like it's like a compliment sandwich. It's like you build them up. Then you stick the insult in the middle and then you compliment them again. It's like a managerial tactic. I can't I, stand those fucking people, but I hope they're wildly successful, but fuck them. They suck. Another tactic that he has, and you're going to hear him use is automatically he's your best friend. He, you're like his brother. He's your best friend. I, we mesh immediately. We're like best friends. And I think he uses that kind of like cult, like a cult dude, like yeah. cult speak. We're so close, man. He's like the best friend I ever had. And I legitly mean that. And I don't want to talk about you on my shows and I'm not going to talk about you on my shows. And I haven't been talking about you on my shows. If I had a fucking dollar for every time he said that on one of his shows that he doesn't talk about anybody and that he will (laughs) never talk about them and he could give a shit less, but he just did. He's going to do about an hour, you know, so. (laughs) Because it's not what people want to hear. It's not what people want to get into is bullshit drama and beefs. That's what it is. is bullshit drama and it's bullshit beefs. Like like he does every episode with us now. Like in, in, like he's done it in the, in the history of time on his podcast. He doesn't want to get into beefs and personal stuff. But yet he'll rant for 45 fucking minutes about beefs and rants and personal stuff. Okay. This is bullshit drama and it's bullshit beefs. And it's stupid because you don't have any balls to ever say it to my fucking face ever. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, again, with the, with the balls? Uh, I, I tweeted this out the other day that old Johnny podcasting must be obsessed with balls because apparently balls. that's all. Balls. <laughs> yeah, balls. Uh, uh, that's apparently all. <laughs> Pay it to my fucking face. I like when he when he gets really intense. It's it's wrestling promo time. Yeah, I love it. You pointed it out, Joey. I love it. as soon as he did that video about you and Husey and that, and he called it a pipe bomb. I was like, I'm not listening to it because that is so fucking cringy. Yep. It's Don't a worry. pipe He'll bomb, say, bro. He'll man. Because you know what would happen if you did? You want to get froggy? Come talk to me, man. Have a conversation like a gentleman. Because you never say half the shit you said online to my face. And if you think you're getting my go by this guy going and doing a show with yes. him. Oh. Ah, yes. Yeah. Yes. So Dude. so Vampiro, who who is probably four times the size of John Wangland, uh, doesn't have the balls to say something to his face. Like would John really confront Vamp? I mean, come on, dude. Like, look, I know John was in the military and he, he's probably had special training and shit like that. But, dude, seriously, like, he would cower down in three seconds. We all know John. We all we all know his bark is bigger than his bite. There's no way that he would ever confront uh, Vamp if you ever saw him at a convention or something. He'd be like, "Oh, hey, man, what's going on? Oh, it's good to see you. You know, he'd be we nothing but talk. nice. We should, yeah. Oh, God, that guy. And if you're feeling froggy, your eyes will be bugging like John Wanglin on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Go by this guy going and doing a show with him. You're actually making me happy because I can't wait to see him fuck you over to and you waste your time with him because you're not going to listen to me like I wouldn't listen to you. I know you laughed when it ended. Because you knew that it would happen. And I knew in the back of my head it was going to happen too. But I wanted to help somebody. And I felt for the guy. And it was an opportunity to do something right. You're doing this for the wrong reasons. You're doing this out of spite. You're doing this out of hate. And you're doing it out of anger towards me. And that's fine. Because when you do shit out of spite, folks, it doesn't less- work out. Never works out for you, man. It's a lesson for all of us. Because Imagine that, like he's doing right now some confusion there i am not nor have i ever been angry with this guy 
it's more it's very much more an entertainment thing i guess well nah that's not true the only time i was ever angry was when that video came out and i was like that's fucked up because when you tweet someone people that you know someone works with or platforms or whatever i always said that was the line that's the fucking line it really is you know all this stuff that we do whatever but I don't know. That's just my personal opinion. You know, some people can, like to go can a we at least lower. Set the record straight, Joe, for a second. Like, did you take any personal satisfaction uh, in getting vamp? Sure, sure. Because I thought I I would I I I wanted to succeed where he failed. Absolutely. But I I also only made a two show deal yeah. with Blue Chew because I was you know I was pretty sure. But it, it certainly wasn't a success, but I don't consider it a failure either. It was just, it was something that was tried and the door is open, but I don't go out of my way to, to bother him or text him or call him and go, Hey, what are we doing with the show? He knows if he wants to do the show, he can do the show. It's there, you know, it's whatever. And that's one thing with John is, especially with Dan Severn. Cause I asked him several weeks ago when we were still talking, like, you know, with the pandemic and all that, I'm sure Dan's schedule has freed up quite a bit because he would travel a lot. And I asked him if he wanted to do the show with him again. He's like, no nah, man, never. I'll never, uh, you know, I love the guy, but you know, I'll never do a show with him again because he's so flaky and he can't commit to things and blah, Dude, blah, blah, blah. Let me tell you something about Dan Severn. <laughs> I had Severn on creative control years ago and he was like, I'm very busy, but if you, I want to record, it's got to be 5 a.m. Mountain time, whatever Detroit's in. I don't know what that central, whatever. That's when I wake up, I'll have my coffee and we'll record. And he was right there on the dot when he said he would bright eyed, bushy tailed with his coffee, you know, let's do this. So my experience with him has never been anything like that, that he, I never, he was, he said he'd be there at a time. He was there. He didn't know me. He just knew he had a podcast interview, you know? Yep. So I, I'd be interested to know what exactly the fall, the real falling out was there. I don't believe for a second that I I've always suspected kind of that John told him he was doing a podcast interview and he just created a show out of it. <laughs> Dan wasn't really aware there was a show. That's just my theory. Like, you know, like you could take, I think someone asked a mailbag question for disco the other day and he answered. And then at the end we found out the guy wrote for a website and I was like, dude, he just interviewed you for the site. Like he's going to take that quote and put it in his article. Yeah. yeah. I, I love how hateful you are, Joe and, and Mike and all of us. So I'm going to be hate, a hateful troll now. Uh, but in this, he literally says, I can't wait to see him. Fuck you. Yeah. Like, I mean, that's that's even worse than what Rob's up to. He wants to, I mean, is that cuck behavior? I don't know what that is, but he wants to watch someone fuck you. That's what John's into. So good like you, John. Definitely feel like he's a watcher. Yeah, I think so. A voyeur? A voyeur. Once or twice in life where we've done oh, something yeah. bullshit and vindictive. You want to know something I did that's stupid and I'll say it? I did, I, I did stupid shit by getting involved with you people and communicating back and forth with you for months and doing shows where I actually acknowledge your, your stupid asses over and over again on my shows. And you know what I probably did? I probably drove away people that didn't want to hear it, that were listening to my show for the right reasons. Now, thankfully, my numbers stay pretty damn consistent and good, and they've grown really well over the last year. In fact, I'll, I'll make you hate me even more. My numbers have gone up 248% over the last freaking few months. So take the, take that in your pipe and smoke it when you want to say people don't do anything. And you know why it's gone up 248% over the last few months? And where do I get that random number to from my analytics, folks? So if you think I'm making up a 248% number, you're crazy too, because that's what they'll say next, Richie. You want to know why I went up? Because I stopped engaging and talking about you dopes, because that's not what people wanted to hear. Because I had a good people friend like hear. Richie. Oh, 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 want to hear it. That is what people want to hear. That's why this shit is so successful. You got people lined up down the street to come on and do these parodies because people do want to hear about that. My highest downloaded shows were the ones where I talked about my split with the network. Like, yeah. come on, man. But people I think like drama. Maybe he's got a point. Maybe people don't want to hear him attempt to do well, something yeah, like that. You know? he's not good I, at it. I also like the other thing. Like, 200 and how, hey john how's your show doing it's up one million percent this month yeah like come on dude that's what is 248 percent? so you went from one download to 248 <laughs> stop. pretty much stop oh, it. it's in it 2.4 right <laughs> tell me that as a fan you know as a listener of the show and said you got a great show i love doing it i love talking i love listening to it i don't know these guys i don't want to hear that stupid shit about these guys like that's dumb man john don't give them, don't give them the satisfaction. 
You know, I know it pisses you off. Don't give him the satisfaction. Don't talk I'm about him. Giving him right now. The only reason you're being talked about today is because of this guy and what you guys think you're doing here and the message of lies that you guys have tried to spread too. Because you guys have been the ones spreading this stuff to people. So thankfully, a guy like Richie, who was a fan of our show and my work that I became great friends with over the last six months, it's one of my best friends now and somebody that's like a brother to me that we talk 50 times a day and we just mesh on every level that has helped my show get back up there when I wasn't doing the numbers that I wanted to do because I was focusing my time on stupidity. And I had a guy over here that was a fan, that was somebody that was listening, that I grew a friendship with, that had great ideas that I listened to. And I listened because I was smart to somebody. Because when I did shit out of being vindictive like you guys are doing, it ended up costing me. Best friends. Best friend. Bro- like a brother to me. Like a brother. Like, we are all brother. his brothers. Yeah. Talk 50 times a day. 50 times, yeah. 50 times a day. You guys are doing? It ended up costing me. Yep. Yeah. And it didn't work for me. Did I have some great downloads in that time frame? You damn right I did. I had some great downloads. Absolutely. But was it as steady as it used to be before that? Probably not. And definitely not. Because I listened to the advice about not being vindictive and not being focusing on that stuff from somebody else. And I give him all the credit right over there because he's the person that said it to me. And he's the one that put it in my perspective as a friend. And you know what? It worked out for me. And we're gaining many, many people back. And we're happy for that because we love our listeners. I like when he goes, you know, and it's because uh, Richie was a big fan of mine and it's, eh, no, he was a fan of Vampiro's. Stop it. Stop, yeah. stop what you're saying. And, and how can your numbers be great? Uh, but now they're even, now they're even better, but they sucked because he was vindictive, but, but they were good too. <laughs> I love yeah, it. It was, he, he got a couple fun. of great downloads. He got a couple of great downloads <laughs> from his two computers in his house. He got like a couple of thousand. So either the numbers shit the bed so he had to change formats and, and stop you know, doing those kind of shows, but they also did really well. So what the fuck is it? Yeah. Yeah. That we got out of it. So yeah, absolutely, man. And once again, you know, there's always a good in everything. I would not, I would go back and do it all again tomorrow. Richie, me and Richie talked about this offline and he, you know, he was pretty hot about it the other day and has been trying to get me to talk about it because he thinks that I should. And he doesn't like seeing my name get drug out through the mud on things because he's a friend and he's well, loyal. I'll go back. I'd go back and do it again tomorrow the same way, Richie and, and still help the guy and do it and, and go something. And I enjoyed a lot of the time I worked with him. Was it hard and difficult and up and down? Of course, with people like that. Yeah. Cause that's not my personality. I mean, you know me, I'm probably the no, most laid no. back guy. So laid private. Back. Yeah. Laid back. Yeah. Nothing was, ever gets there. Was, was I shocked that John Wangland asked that question? No, I wasn't. I wasn't shocked. Would I be shocked if he did it again in the next couple of minutes? No, I wouldn't be shocked. No. I mean, I'm probably the most laid back guy out there, man. Like I'm just a guy that works my butt off like everybody out there is doing too in life. Working two fucking jobs, man, trying to grow something in here. I I don't say two jobs. I got three fucking jobs, man. You know, I do the network full time here, all the shows. I do upwards of 10 to 15 podcasts a week you know, that are out there trying to grow a brand and develop it, you know, uh, there, and help other people start doing that too. Yeah. And that's what we do. And we don't charge anybody for that. And there's this, there's this MO to when people say, Oh, they're, you know, Richie did your thing. He's just, uh, John's charging him. Have I ever charged you a dime for anything I've helped you with or showed you? No, in fact, the, the first show we did, you offered me a spot on the network for your charge, man. Yeah. Uh, you were very welcoming and, and, uh, you know, you and, you and Rob both were very welcoming and I've damn near been on every show, uh, with you guys since. I don't know what the, who, if there was exceptions to the rule or whatever, but I do also know from people that when, when I started creative control, people were charged everyone. So it's not like I was just beaten ham bone for money or the honorable mention guys or Pat or whoever animal paid, you know, everybody paid like I think the first six to eight months or something. And then once uh, we moved the speaker, I stopped charging everybody. So, but I remember when John started reality check, he's like, he was asking me advice and where do I go for sponsors and all this? And I didn't have a problem telling him this stuff. And he was like, what do you charge someone? And I said, I charge $75 for four shows. And then I heard down the line from someone, I can't remember who it was. They turned it down, but they were like, yeah, he wanted $75 for four. So I don't know who he was charging, but he was trying to charge some people. I don't know which he, one. He charged Turtles and I $75 a month for Red Turtle know, Wrestling. See? So, so he, there, yeah. That sucks. And, and I edited my own fucking shows and promoted them. Right. I was paying him for their 
you know, his time promote what he said, putting all this money and everything into promotions and all that. And, and the server costs, the hosting fees. So yeah. Okay. And the biggest reason I, I had Richie on the show other than starting to talk was Vamp had promised that he was going to get on a Skype call with everybody. And that was one of the other promises he made. If you remember, you know, that everybody was going to take the time to give him a call. And then nobody ever got it because he never went through with it. He never stuck through with it. And I said, yeah, I can't make that part of it up. I said, but how would you like to come on a wrestling show and a podcast that oh. gets listened to by a lot of people and just come and shoot the shit with me and have some fun, you know? And you're like, hell yeah, let's do it. Had you on the show. Rest was history, man. We were talking every day. We, you know, became, you know, tremendous friends, got to know each other. Now we spend every fucking night almost, you know, doing this stuff and hanging out because yep. Richie lives in Arizona. I live in New York and it's like we're right around the corner, but we're not because yep. of that show. And I'm appreciative for that because I got to meet great people. Sunny Salem, who does our impact review, tremendous person. Yep. She lives out in Thunder Bay, Ontario, Canada. Um, love her to death. She's so cool. Great person. She was a Patreon member too. And uh, just developed. Who also got refunded. Yep. And could validate it there too. And I'm like, I guess why it's so easy to prove because there wasn't that many because we just started it. I was going to say, what, what is there left? Four people? I mean, yeah. we, we can buy it. We, we can track those down too. I have all their names. <laughs> there was three other people other than you guys, man, because we never got it off good because he never put the work in to, to promote it because he just wouldn't do it. Five. 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 Yeah. Five patrons. I was way off. You know, and that was that. And there was people that wanted to do it and would have been interested if we would have done it. That's why I said we could have had a great number. So that's why we did the show. It wasn't a trash on Joe Feeney. It wasn't a trash on Adam Hughes. It wasn't a trash on the Creative Control Network. You know, it's to call the truth out. Doing a new podcast, great, man. You brought them on, great. Remember what you told me about people and that I didn't listen to? And remember what I'm telling you now that you're not going to listen to because you're, you're thinking I'm whatever. And... The only other reason I did was because I'm not going to have anybody ever run my name through the mud and say I didn't give them their fucking money and I didn't give them their money back and I didn't fucking do what I said I was going to do. I'm 38 years old and I've been successful at every job I've ever done. And this isn't an ego boost or an arrogant or cocky nature. I've been successful at everything I've ever done because I have high morals and values. And when my in my life, if I ever lacked morals and values, like we all do at times, I fucking paid the consequences for it just like everybody else. And like one thing now. I can say is I've never lacked morals or values in a career, a job, and I've been very successful in my life because of it. And I hope that it translates. And that's not arrogant. That's not cocky. That's why it pisses me off to see that somebody runs their mouth and says that shit. That's garbage, man. That's bullshit. And that's wrong. And if you think blow. I'm not, yeah, that's a low blow. And that can damage somebody's reputation. That can damage somebody's ability to do business and make money that I use like to support video. my family too. I don't do this just because I love it. I do love it and that's why I do it, but I do it also to hopefully continue to grow something I'm passionate about and financially make more money so I can put my kids through college. So I can sit over there and keep my two houses and keep them going so I can retire one day. Wait, I thought he had three houses. I thought he had three houses. Three, whoa, 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 whoa. three houses in a condo in Florida. In a condo. Yeah. yeah. He, what so he, when was this video when was this uh, january show? of last year so he's bought january, another this, house sorry, january this year so in 2020 during a pandemic he's bought another house and the condo in florida no yeah. yeah he must have bought the condo because florida was a bit more lax on the covid <laughs> so he could he could head down to florida and get into his condo but uh in, no that's in, good success yeah, he, in 2020 is great he's been a success at everything it's great to know that um he, uh, he wants, you know, back then it was, I'm trying to get this into a thing and I, I want to make enough money to put my kids through college. Are you crazy? You yeah. think you're going to make a college fund from podcasting? Good be. That's, that's amazing. Like how delusional do you have to be to think? Very, dude, we are not Joe Rogan. Okay. <laughs> Shit. We're not fucking Steve Austin. You know, it's not going to happen. I mean, I, how many shows do I have to be involved in to make, to, uh, to have a semi okay living and be able to pay my bills? Like 40. It's unbelievable. He wouldn't well, even make enough money to go to dinner at Ruth's Chris Steakhouse. Yeah. I mean, Christ. But, uh, I was gonna, oh, um, but luckily for, for him and for everyone else, now he's going to do things the right way. And it's not about the money. It's about the love. So, yes. Fun. Fun. You're going to have fun. Fun for everyone. And keep fun. my two houses and keep them going so I can retire one day. 
like every single one of you guys. So don't pull that shit because that takes money out of people's pocket by putting them in a bad MO like that. By putting them in a bad MO like that. What, what is a bad MO? The second time you said Bad it. modus operandi. <laughs> that really gets my go. I'm telling you. Gets my go. In a bad category? What are you trying to say here? <laughs> brutal. Absolutely brutal. So when he got his four different master's degrees, he didn't take you know English or reading comprehension. No, he must have got his master's uh-huh. in... In like kid, television, like kids shows or whatever. One uh, thing he did not take class in broadcasting <laughs> or journalism like. or editing or producing. Yeah. If you think I'm wrong and you think I'm bullshitting you or anybody else. And if you think that's really me, I can guarantee you one thing. I can prove everything with a hundred percent fact and I'll call anybody out that says different. So you have the open opportunity. If you think I'm bullshitting and lying for these people out there that are spreading this stuff to try to get at me. Come on, prove me wrong. I'll make you look like a jackass because Mike, I will Mike. prove you wrong. Prove Mike, me sorry. wrong. Mike, you've just gone back to an episode previous <laughs> when he said, if you want to call me out, call me out. Like, we've already done this. <laughs> haven't we? This is, isn't this going back to an old show? Uh, haven't we done this? That's enough bad talk. It's been a while since we've dropped a little pipe bombs of truth on people here, man. I wouldn't have done it if it wasn't for you. I appreciate you letting me get it off my chest for everybody. And hey, good luck to you, Vamp. I mean that legitly. I hope you stick with something on this and I hope you're successful with that. And good luck to those guys over there if you're going to do that, if that's really what you're doing and where you're going. If you think that bothers me, it absolutely bothers me nothing. And I'm going to... It absolutely... It bothers me nothing. (laughs) Which is why I talked about it for 20 minutes now. Bothers his penis, which is nothing. (laughs) Going... If you think that bothers me, it absolutely bothers me nothing. And I'm going to relish in it a little bit because I'm being vindictive a little bit on that, which maybe will get me for two. I'll get my karma for being vindictive and laughing when you get fucked over too. But be smart. Take my advice, man. Don't, Don't forget what you told me. It's on you now. And Vamp, you're wrong, man. And if you say that to anybody again... Me and you are going to have a conversation ourselves because that's slanderous and that's never going to happen. So slanderous. anybody that says that shit, you better watch out because that's wrong. That's slander. It's liable. Whatever you want to make it defamation of character. And uh, I'll just leave it at that because that's where I won't tolerate shit ever. Not talking about any more bad stuff. Moving on. We're going to have a great rest of the weekend. Never. Great week. Keep coming and checking it out. Never again will they ever talk about any bad stuff like that. He's going to relish in it. He's going to mayonnaise in it. He's going to catch up in it. He's going to mustard in it. Unreliable and slander and it's defamation, whatever you want to call it. He's it's, big on that whole defamation of character thing. Yeah. So, how did everyone wah, feel wah, about wah, today, wah. today's material? That was tough. Like, I, I felt bad with all the Richie. Like, yeah, well, well, great, great editor, great guy, great, great yeah. homie. Mike Durbin, he's like a brother to me. We talk, you know, 50, 50, 50 times, times a night. night. 50 we times. Kind of snip, yeah. snip that out and make this a beautiful, beautiful. Uh, production as usual good guy great guy mike nothing but love for mike nothing but respect mike is such a great guy great video talented guy great show you again he loved you again in this one yeah Yeah. Yeah. see that now how come he keeps saying no one talks to him like a man but in this one mike talked to him like a gentleman they had a gentleman conversation absolutely gentleman (laughs) here's what happened mike had a gentleman's conversation with him in january and now in july and august again he learned his lesson i'm not getting on the phone with this guy again jesus christ that's I the spent, thing, like, I, I like spent, the whole challenge. Sorry, Mike. The whole challenge from last week, or you know, that you guys played before. Like, like you said, Joe. What is there left to be said? Like, we've said everything to this guy. Why? What could we possibly benefit from from talking to John face to face? There's nothing for us. There's there's no incentive whatsoever. Do we have to keep rehashing the same shit? We've already said our pieces. Yeah, I there's nothing like left to be said. It's like having a nice chuckle over it on Saturday. I'm interested, uh, as I said to Mike before, with what the, the butthole guys may have to say because mm. they made reference on Twitter to how something about the whole fake download controversy. You know, mm-hmm. like, ooh, because I figure that's what happened with uh, Art 19 and, and Publisher Desk and whatnot is that, you know, hey, we're going to come in, we're going to give you, between our shows, we're going to give you 75,000 downloads a month. And then, you know, there's 4,000 or five or 10 even. Well, that's once you don't produce, that's that, you know. 
Joe, I've got a question for you. So something I was told at the Uh-oh. very beginning of when I spoke to John Wanglin back in, gee, we're probably going back to February of 2019. Yeah. Um, Reality Check, he first told me Reality Check was in partnership with you. Was that ever the situation, no. Joe? No. no? The only, th- the how, only thing that was that's like... That's how a- he hooked me, Joe. That's how he hooked me he because me, I knew... told me the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, I knew that you were with KH100. I knew that you were with Conrad and all that. I was like, Joe's got great contacts. If we're in business with Joe, this might go somewhere. And then obviously when things turned sour um, and he started just talking insane shit about you guys, uh, obviously I tried to do my best to reconstruct that bridge uh, bridge that he had set on fire um, and hence me being here today. But yeah, that was never the case because apparently Rob was told the same thing. No, uh, the closest thing to a partnership was when, like I said, he called me and just asked and said he was going to do this and asked for advice. How do I do this? Where do I go for sponsors? How much should I charge? And I freely gave him answers and advice, which maybe someone would say, why would you do that to someone that's going to be a competitor or wants to be a competitor? Because I didn't, I quite frankly, I didn't sweat it really, you know, and I was interested to see what he would do, but I was told the same thing. We could be partners if I need help with this or you need help, I'll help you out with editing and stuff. But at that time, Reality Check was going to be anchored by Jake the Snake Roberts, J.J. Hey, Dillon. And, oh, I forgot uh, about Jake the Snake. Yeah, That's right. Was, he told us that, Rob. Yep, he did. There was a third yep. one that was coming, and it was probably Severn or somebody. But uh, initially, oh, um, who's the guy that does the show with Brian Last? That, that he's a big-time historian. He was on Conan's show. He started out with Russo. John Arezzi. Oh, John Arezzi, yeah. So so he oh, he's, oh, he's bitched here's, about that. Oh, he was how, about that, yeah. Here's how our friend deals with things. And, and I'm the one that, that did uh, notice this and locked <coughs> it down. And Mike knows because I've showed him, I showed him and now he knows what it is. So he thinks he's going to get John Arezzi involved. John Arezzi goes with Brian last. So I'm looking at uh, iTunes show reviews. And I find under the John Arezzi show that is with Brian last now, a review from the name, what is it? Best. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's the name he uses to leave shitty reviews. And I knew it because it was on, you know, Hughesies and, and whoever's. And then I see Best leaves a review underneath uh, John, John Arezzi and, and Brian Lass. And if we continue, I could probably read it to you uh, verbatim. But he also did reviews on my show and his show under so that he name. Left positive so he left positive reviews. Yeah. 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 And so, his wife left positive reviews as well, too. Yes. So. yes. Um, so, yeah, that's how he uh, paid, paid Arezzi back by saying this show fucking stinks. Uh, because he didn't, he didn't want, and Brian Lance has a great reputation. What are you going to do? And he probably, uh, Arezzi probably knew him because they were, you know, both old time uh, smarks, you know, that went all to the shows and all that. So you just, you just reminding me of Jake the Snake. He did tell us that Jake the Snake was in line. Uh, and then, with Dan Seven, he like, he kept saying to me like each recording, like this guy we're getting, he's like top five all time, top five all time, and like what's the old adage? Undersell, over deliver. Yes. I listened to his appearance on your show this week, Mike. Um, if that's not an example of overselling and underdelivering, I'm talking about the one where he's promoting the Dan Seven podcast. Yeah, the video. That's and he said he was going to manage. He was going to manage Dan Seven oh. in, a, in a wrestling match. They were going to do an eye pay per view. He was organising an eye pay per view. I listened to all that this week. I was like. None of this happened. None of it. <laughs> I remember, I, dude, I remember looking right at him. You know, I was face to face with him, looking at him. And I'm like, dude, this guy is telling me that he's going to walk Dan Severn to the ring. I'm like, I was supposed to as well. There was supposed to be an event in Enfield, Connecticut. <laughs> I remember these conversations. That back was, in, was funny. Back in my old stomping grounds. But for whatever reason, he said Dan had uh, an issue with the promoter. I think it was for big time wrestling. And, uh, Dan pulled out of the appearances, but we were supposed to fly up there to uh, Providence and um, or Pawtucket, I think, and uh, Enfield, Connecticut, and do the big time wrestling shows and and walk Dan down to the ring. That's amazing. And it was, was funny because going to pay for these he, flights. Yeah, well, that was the thing. He was um, Dan Seven was in Australia, like in Melbourne, uh, like a few weeks before that. And I said to John, "Well, get me booked on that show. I'll walk him to the ring, and yeah. you know, you've obviously got to cover my trans, but." You know, I'll go there and um, Mike, though, I absolutely loved your like 
perfectly sarcastic. Wow. <laughs> wow. 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 <laughs> <laughs> that was my favorite part. Every time you go, wow. Yeah. I'm like, dude, what, is this guy fucking nuts? Is, I mean, hey, and John is going to promote his own show in New York. He's going to put on his own wrestling show and become a wrestling promoter. And he said he had all these contacts and all that. Yeah. Empty promises. That's all we've ever gotten from Mr. But here's Wayland. the thing. I, I think the main question, and it's always been a question, like through all these shows, and but I don't think anyone's ever really asked it, is did he really believe this stuff, or was he just making it up to try to sound big time, or had he can, or it was it was completely not a reality, but he convinced himself that it was right. Now like, we've talked about mental illness, whatever. Does he have Does he have a problem? <laughs> like I I'm, think he I'm believes serious. everything he says. I think, think believes he believes it, it and then yeah. when it doesn't come true, it's someone else's fault. Yeah, like, absolutely. It's, yeah, he, it's he, the George he, Costanza. It's not a lie if you believe it. Like he believes it. Like, I, I don't think you could keep doing podcasts like this. Like, how could you keep going onto a podcast and blaming Joe Feeney, Mike Durbin, and Adam Hughes for all of your? Fa- how could you keep doing that? if you just sat back and listened to one of your own fucking podcasts, yeah. like just listen to the shit you've said. None of it's come true. None of it. And you know how much Not stuff I edit up? Dean, you, you've known, like whenever we misspeak on shows and stuff like that, like you've told me to cut stuff out. And stuff, and you're like, I, when I'm doing my shows now by myself, there's a lot of shit that I, I cut out that I misspeak on or, or ramble on. But like John, John doesn't cut any, he hits fucking record and he hits stop. He doesn't edit anything like he. Why does he think rambling on for 45 minutes and repeating the same things over and over again? Why does he think that's a good idea? I, I just wanted to do this because I, I wasted my time to look it up now. So here's some of yeah. the best <laughs> podcast. Oh, yeah. And these are this is this is the one that, he you know, there was a review under Rad Turtles, F and for real, and then negative ones to Husey and things like that. Here's a review for total engagement with Matt Coon. You should have stayed retired from podcasting, Matt. This show is slip and beyond bad. I suppose that could mean slop. I don't know. Matt Coon is so unlikable in so many ways. Here's a Tuesday hello. And this wait, is, wait, now, here's the thing about this. People talk about looking at uh, dates and timestamps. This review was left when everyone was getting along. So mm-hmm. Just already- before you go on, yeah. how much do you want to bet all these negative reviews could perfectly describe John? Oh, oh yeah, absolutely. This show is obnoxious, and this guy's a channel changer. Poor attempts at trying to be funny and obnoxious hosts and stupid questions. Here's a review for the brand. Between Vince and his obnoxious, he likes this word, and whiny host Jeff Lane, this stuff is unlistenable material. Vince is a con man and cons his subscribers. Well, I believe he did an episode on that, didn't he? <laughs> I got one from Best. Uh, so this girl, Tamara, she has her own podcast. Yeah. She left a favorable review on the reality check thing. So in return, John did one for her. And uh, this is John saying, real show with great content. Want a fun? Okay, keep- hold on. <laughs> read it like it's spelled, man. Read I'm going to read it verbatim. This, yeah. is, this is a guy that claims to have multiple. Master's degrees. He's got multiple degrees in various things. Now, listen to this. Want a fun show to listen to? Well, this is a show you will enjoy listening to and have fun listening to as well. <laughs> That's what the fuck? That, that is like the audio from his show. Yeah. Like, it's like he must, be, he, he must be clicking the button and, and speaking into it's, it. It's got that's, yeah, that's, exactly. that's voice to text. Want something yeah. fun to listen to? This is something fun to listen to. You should listen to this. It's fun. Tamara is as real as it gets and talks about real life things and pulls no punches. A, a must life. listen for anyone. A must listen for everyone and you need to check it out. Smiley face, smiley face. John WWR podcast. Oh, so he put his name under best now. He did. Okay, what a schmuck. That's how I first, yeah. like, I think maybe at first Mike and Husey were like, well, it could be John. Who knows? And then, I, and then he signed one as John Wang. And I'm like, look, dude, I was right the whole time. Yeah. But this I, is I'm surprised that, he didn't call her the realest girl in the room. Realest girl. <sighs> this is the one that he left John Arezzi for, for going with Brian Last over him. Another drab and boring podcast from Arcadian Vanguard. Vanguard. I was looking forward to hearing John from some interviews I've heard. He is hit or miss with being entertaining. This show stinks. And Brian Lass is the worst. Don't waste your time listening to this junk. Uh, what I love about that review is it actually, because it was directed at John Rezzi, it actually had John in there. 
So he literally sent a review to himself, yeah. literally, because yeah. that couldn't have summed him up better. I just take the Brian last bit out. It's just this show is garbage and you can't listen to it unless Joe Feeney, Mike Durban and whoever they have on rip the piss out of everything they say. Obnoxious. <laughs> I don't know if that's an Australian term, rip the piss. Is that the flog and the dolphin of this week? I don't know. <laughs> made, more, made more sense than anything. Well, yeah, you've just, you just titled the episode, so thank you. Ripping the piss. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping I would. So, yeah, yeah cool. you got it. You win. You win. Yeah. All right, yeah, that's what we did. We ripped the piss out, and, um, <laughs> you know, we had a great time doing it. I uh, want to thank the Aussie guy, Dean Galloway. Wanna thank you. I want to thank Brad Rob. Uh, gentlemen, do you guys have any final thoughts? Uh, look, I think we learned a lot about John Wayland today that we didn't know before. I mean, that was a very enlightening interview that we listened to, uh, mm-hmm. and it was fun. And I think he did it the right way. Um, and it was it was fun. Now, there's a lot that I learned today. Rob about never John. has one feed. I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Hey, okay. All right. Well, fat coon. That's that's good. Throwing shade. Throwing that's shade. a low blow, there, man. Uh, it's 23 XL. That's what everybody knows me by. So, uh, look, uh, there's nothing more that can be said about what we listen to. It, it's, it's just rinse and repeat insert name here, whatever is on his mind, whoever wronged him that week or that month, he has to go on a, on a rant about it. And like, like Joe said, you know, which is it, John, do you get great numbers or do you not get great numbers? Mm-hmm. Do, do you people- wish- do you wish people well or do you despise them or do you hope they, you know, are you, are you, are you relishing the fact that they're going to fail or do you wish them well? What's, which is it? It's, it's pretty confusing. Is Mike a great guy or is he a piece of <laughs> shit? I, I'd really like to know what, how he feels one way or another. I like him. Sorry. Oh, we weren't asking. He's okay. You know, I, I, Mike's I, a sniper. Sorry. I'm just going to chime in. I love Mike cause he's a sniper. <laughs> um, he he sits back quietly on these podcasts, but he has these nice little jabs that he throws yeah, in there. Yeah. And with his editing and his fucking research and all that that he does on this, Mike's got all the tools um, and he doesn't need much like firepower and he'll blow your head off. So I'm a big fan of your work, Mike. Uh, Thank you. Keep it up, mate. Keep it up. Thank, Thank you. you. I, I, I think the, the greatest thing that I love doing is um, I love inserting the sound clips. Tell me what you think of me. So the more shows we do, the more sound clips I can get. And I have them in my arsenal. And uh, I just love just placing them in there at the right time. And Huge and monumental. I got you quite uh, a few today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I have, I have one question and thought before we do wrap up. It's uh, just something to satisfy my curiosity. I know that uh, from what he was saying on the show today that, you know, I was losing listeners from this shit and Richie came out and told me I shouldn't talk about it. And I know that that's some, I know that that happened, but it always seemed like it was back and forth. Like at one time it would be for anyone that was involved. Don't mention those guys over there. We're not going to get into Twitter wars anymore. This is bullshit. And then it would be like, all right, all hands on deck. We're going to fucking go after these guys, blah, blah, blah. So how schizophrenic was it? And how many times did it change from don't mention them ever to let's blow them away? It changed all the time, Joe, because, it, and like I said, he usually does this, the typical thing of we're not going to name those guys, but they know who they are. They're listening. I'm not going to give them any attention. I'm not going to give them the satisfaction of mentioning their names, but <laughs> we know who he's talking about. Yeah. And, you know, he'll go on. And I, look, I, I've probably been guilty of the same thing, saying I'm never going to talk about John again, but here I am. Yeah. Uh, but he would literally say, all right, we're not going to, we're going to focus on business. We're not going to talk about them anymore. We're not going to give them any negative attention or, or cause we know they're listening. We don't want to, you know, I don't want to get my go. Uh, <laughs> but then we're going to lay one final pipe bomb, one <laughs> final pipe bomb. And, and that's it. We're going to be done with it. It's going to be business as usual. And then he would see something on Twitter or on YouTube or whatever. And it would just set him off. Like he, he literally went from zero to a thousand in three seconds. And that's, that's his pattern of behavior, no matter who it is. Like I said, whether it's the brand, whether it's you guys, whether it's Vamp or me or whoever else, he says he's done with it. He's not that kind of guy. He's not vindictive. He's laid back. Laid back. He's laid back. Uh, but then he goes and does the same thing over again. And, and, and going on effing for real has to be the funniest shit ever uh, because the fact that he drops that bombshell announcement that they're going to be one feed and do one things the right way, uh, and they're going to be a team, 
and then a week later they're gone. Uh, that just tells you right there <laughs> how toxic John Wanglin is, and nobody wants to do business with him anymore. Couldn't have planned it any better. I wish I could sit here and say, guess what, guys? Me and Blake planned that from the start. And I wanted him to do that to tell John he was going to work with him so, they, so John could do the whole show about the brand, knowing I was going to take him away the whole time. I didn't, but I wish I did. That would be Ooh. some master puppeteer shit right there. That was what I thought when I was listening to that, actually, because Rob's been there where John, we were doing an episode of Rad Turtles once and John was coming on with a big announcement and John wouldn't tell us what the big announce was on was until we were recording the podcast. And so I was listening to that as you guys were doing the listen along going, these guys don't know what he's about to say and they're about to find out and they're going to end their podcast and go, fuck, (laughs) fucking shit is that now? Like (laughs) it would just, that was fucking. And then when they, they announced or you announced that they were coming to creative control, that uh, genuinely that, that got a genuine laugh out loud from me. Uh, because loved people, it. people loved you it. just spent like what 35 40 minutes whatever however long you took announcing that those guys would have been looking at each other going what the fuck we didn't know about this what are you doing it's fuck off the worst idea i've he- ever heard in podcasting yeah it's not it was... the, it's not russo's brand because those guys are all getting paid from vince that's a paid subscription of course it's under you know and it's not even under one feed when you click on your brand membership <laughs> it's you have a drop down menu and you pick a fucking show there is no, no one wants to be under one feed. It was terrible, terrible thinking. Oh, and the other, just going back to what you said about what you asked about all hands on deck or stop talking about these guys, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Um, that was the other thing that I picked up from uh, when he appeared on your show, Mike, uh, the Dan Seven interview, and you talked about the podcast war. And I'd never heard that before. And, and like, it was something that I'd always thought, but I wasn't sure of. He said that I was his enforcer. Well, I was multiple enforcers because I'm multiple characters, but I was his enforcer. And I was like, I knew he always thought that. He always thought all I'll have to do is unleash, Deploy unleash him and he'll tear people down. Yeah. But I was like, I don't, I don't want no part of this. Like, I like to sink the boots in. Like, I sunk the boots in on Matt Coon. I sunk the boots in on the grapplers when it looked like they were falling apart. And now I'm sinking the boots into Johnny podcasting. Mm. And yes, John, I am a troll. And yeah, I'm a douchebag. And I know I'm a douchebag. But most people find it funny. And a lot of people are finding it funny that this douchebag is picking on you now because it's funny. But you loved it when I picked on everyone else. Now I'm picking on you. Oh, Oh, sorry, dude. Sorry that had to happen. But uh, a lot of people enjoy the fact that you're being made fun of. I love it. Uh, Creative Control is doing a great job here. Uh, It's a service to society, I think. I'll tell everyone, listen to them again and again. They get funnier every time. But they do because you you hear what he's just said and then you remember, oh, he's about to say it again. And he says it again and Husey goes, Jesus Christ. You know what I mean? And you just lose it laughing. They are great to listen to again, guys. Seriously. Husey brings the fucking thunder. Husey's been great, man. Really been great. I was very happy to to locate to get my goes today. So that's like the goal forward to find more. Yeah. (laughs) I'm just upset that uh, they haven't released a show now in a full week. John has not released a Wrestling With Reality show. Well, I, I mentioned that to you in, in, in DMs yesterday that, you know, if he stops doing shows, you guys win. If he keeps doing shows, we you win. guys win. Yeah. <laughs> and if he does stop doing shows, because he still has the archives. There is a plethora and an unlimited amount in his 200 plus shows uh, whether he scrubbed them or not, like you guys said, you guys still have them. Still uh, have them. You could literally do this every week for the next five years. Uh, so either way, we win. And to our friend IAC, who says that, uh, you know, you losers spend too much time. Let me tell you something. Today, it's, it's 1 o'clock almost, or 2 o'clock almost Eastern time. We've been doing this for 90 minutes or so, or whatever it's been, with breaks. And uh, I could have... I was invited to go to, to go to a pool and have some beers and whatnot. And my friend belongs to a pool and was like, let's go. I was like, I can't do it, dude. I'm busy. Yeah. So there you go. I chose this <laughs> over a day of swimming and beer. It's the middle of the night for me uh, at the moment, and but I couldn't miss out on this. And like, it actually benefits my life, John, because like now I can go inside. If my son wakes up, I can take it, let my wife sleep. So she'll be happy with me. So then my life is better. So ripping on you, John, is actually making my life better. So thanks, mate. I appreciate it. He's that. made all of our lives better one way or another, <laughs> wouldn't you say? He's enriched, enriched my Saturdays for sure. 
I don't know if I'd know all you guys without John. I've got to give him that credit. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. We got to give him credit yeah. for that. So thanks to that yeah. experience, we've all become best friends. And like, best friends. We're like brothers. brothers. We're, we're like brothers. Anytime you want anything, anything you need. Um, blood brothers, I think. I'll cut my hand right now and put it on the screen. You want to do it? I'll do it. We're blood brothers. <laughs> I feel like, I, but I do feel like if Mike was the director, he'd be doing this. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I want to thank Joe Feeney and our special guest for this week, the Chicken Choker, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Rob, Mr. Rob Francois, and of course the great Aussie guy, the Enforcer. Yeah. Thank you, you guys. Put- and I want to say to everybody, everybody listening, I want to say it to you. I want to say it to my guests this week. Get my go. Yeah, and hey, you know what? If you think you get my go to that man, 